this is the bit where we stop looking at what is going on in the CDN market and we start looking at the futures. So the very last uh, last sort of uh, hour of today, we're going we're gonna to do what, what I call the future briefings. And we're going to um, invite people who are right on the current cutting edge uh, of deployments at a global scale and uh, in a regional uh, in regional markets, uh, and hear a little bit about different aspects of the future of CDNs. So, if we're lucky, I've got my uh, next session all lined up with the quality of service management to look at CDN switching uh, and moving between CDNs, and then we'll get into the futures. So. Tim, are you out there? Are you ready with your panel? I am, Dom, and I'm actually at the double espresso point in the day. So uh, I know you're well past coffee, as you said, but you're, uh, it's that time. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm just ruining the fact that I didn't actually start, take up my own offer of the drinking game to have a pint every time someone said the word edge today. But uh, <laughs> we'll pick that up later. So mm -hmm. leave the panel. In my in last one, in, in the previous in the panel, did, you would have had at least 20. 20 pints, uh, right? Because uh, absolutely. <laughs> over to you. All right, good deal. So uh, on the panel today, I've got uh, four panelists, and I'm actually going to uh, just ask each one of them to um, uh, unmute themselves and uh, make sure the video is turned on. And we'll go ahead and start down the list just to introduce yourself briefly. Tell us uh, about your time in the industry. Ruben, we'll start with you. Yeah, hi. Hi, my name is Rancio Mejias. I am from Nice People at Work. I'm the Chief Sales Officer. I am since 98 in business. I started my career as a, a broadcast child, let's call it like this, working for Thompson Broadcast. My first IPTV system was 2005, my linear TV, which is now orange. Uh, then I worked together with Mark de Jong. Uh, don't uh, uh, move away. Yeah, uh, Mark de Jong at Deutsche Telekom. He was working for uh, one of our daughters, and I was uh, handling there the service management end to end. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm now with nice people at work, one of the leading client analytics providers, uh, entering more and more into the OTT delivery chain, having also a multi CDN uh, tool as such. And uh, happy to discuss with you some technical topics and uh, to get some fresh ideas from you uh, to move forward in our business. Thank you. Sounds good. If you've been around since 2003, you've seen the number of changes like like most of us who are moderators on this who've been around since that time frame. Yeah, it's a funny a funny topic. Yeah, If you remember, the first IPTV system was based on uh, DVB-T and MPEG-2 uh, uh, distribution. <coughs> it was, uh, sorry to say it like this, it was a fucking nightmare at that time. Yeah, but it, it worked. Yeah. But we yeah. don't have 2,000 titles, no Netflix, no Amazon Prime, no whatever. Yeah. I think we had 100 videos and we were praying every night that everything was running smoothly. Yeah. And what was funny is we were trying to do interactive video back then as well. I remember <laughs> attempting H263 with interactive remotes and all people wanted to do was order pizza on their TV. So times haven't changed apparently. Or oh, the vote the vote button. Yeah, oh, the red one is to vote. Yeah. Button, exactly. voted, yeah. Brenton, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Tim. Um, hi, I'm uh, Brenton Now from Touchstream. Uh, we are a live stream monitoring service. Uh, we focus uh, primarily on, on the CDNs, but we do origins and back into the delivery chain. And we aggregate data from other data sources like, uh, like audience metrics. Uh, and that kind of gives us a, a whole picture of, of the end-to-end -end workflow for, for live streaming. Uh, and then we do a lot of data sharing with the CDN. So we'll get into that later, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, my history, gosh, it's, uh, I, I'm a, basically a, a data center management person. I worked for Hewlett Packard for many, many years and I got into uh, video basically by doing a huge project for Sky in the UK where, but it was all broadcast. I was doing broadcast monitoring uh, and uh, that's back in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. Uh, and uh, a little thing, they launched a little streaming product and that's kind of what was my first taste of streaming. And yeah, that, that, that really got me really interested. So just sort of grew from there. Nice, nice, nice. James, uh, you're up next. Hey, thank you. Hey, I'm James Royalty. I'm a principal engineer at NS1. Uh, we do application traffic management, uh, which if you think about it is actually uh, 
we, we make decisions over DNS, right? So DNS is our primary delivery mechanism. And if you think about DNS, from a network point of view or an interaction point of view, it's the first indication you have that a customer wants to come to your website, use your product. So we find that to be a great uh, place to interject intelligent decision-making, real-time metrics, all sorts of things. And this is how we find ourselves uh, kind of in the multi-CDN space, right? If you have multiple alternatives, multiple places to send traffic, um, that's where we come in. So let's see, uh, in terms of background, uh, let's see, I've been in the field for quite a while, although I was doing artificial intelligence for a while, and uh, I guess I got tired of that special kind of failure mode, and I've been doing networking since then because it's a lot more exciting to fail in those ways. <laughs> Uh, and let's see, back in 2007, I was working at a company building a peer-to-peer -peer CDN, uh, which was an eye-opening, fun, enlightening, and opinion-forming process. So good to be here. Thank you. Nice. And thank you very much for your sponsorship of Content Absolutely. Delivery Summit as well. Absolutely. And last but not least, uh, Wilf, if you're out there, introduce yeah. yourself. So my name is Wilfried Dudink. I'm the managing director of Lease Web CDN. Um, we, besides running our own CDN, we operate a, a multi-CDN platform uh, under the Lease Web brand for uh, gaming and enterprise customers, and under the Eurovision Flow brand, uh, particularly for uh, broadcast and media customers. Uh, besides that, I'm the CEO of a company called uh, Synex, which is a Luxembourg-based company which has developed uh, the underlying uh, switching platform and the underlying uh, CDN management uh, platform. We run that as a, a, a cloud-based uh, solution and we also deploy that for uh, private CDN solutions. I mean, the business I realized already in more than 30 years, uh, of which more than 10 years in the CDN business, working for some of the larger global uh, CDNs in the past. I think I, I knew you from level three when you were there for a period of time. Correct, yeah. <laughs> so we're actually going to start with you, Will, for the, a question. Um, I asked the panelists, of course, to come up with a couple questions that they wanted me to work through with them. And one of yours was the question around what people want to achieve with a CDN switching strategy. So, so explain what you mean by that and what would the typical use cases be that somebody would be looking at CDN switching? Yeah, so um, I mean, you can you can switch CDNs by just uh, stitching together a few CDNs and then do manually switching or use DNS-based switching or whatever. But I guess the first question is, what do we want to achieve with uh, with a multi-CDN platform? Um, do you want to increase performance, which makes sense if you're doing uh, live video traffic, for instance? Um, do you want to uh, increase scalability because you have peak loads that you want to sort of uh, make sure that you can cater for? Um, do you want to create availability uh, because I mean, you don't want to have the risk that uh, one of your CDNs is uh, losing connectivity? Um, or do you just want to reduce costs? I mean, there are companies out there that just want to make sure that they always have the cheapest uh, solution for them. So it's really asking yourself, what do I want to achieve with, uh, with creating a multi-CDN strategy? And that is really depending on what type of content uh, you're actually running. I said, I mean, if you're doing live video, then of course you want to increase performance. But if you're a game company that's only interested in, in game downloads, performance criteria is lesser uh, of interest uh, for you. And so that sort of basic question determines also how you want to switch. Uh, I mean, so do you want to switch on business logic because you want to have the cheaper CDN? Do you want to switch on, um, on performance? And that can be DNS-based, that can be player-based, that can be manifest-based. But again, if it's manifest-based and you're in the game business, then that doesn't make sense. So that sort of uh, determines how you want to create your uh, your strategy. So that's why I thought that would be the first question to ask. Sure, good point. Now, James um, Wilford mentioned DNS switching a couple of times, and obviously you 
you mentioned what NS1 does. Um, benefits, pros and cons of DNS switching versus manifest switching, et cetera? Yeah, I think it really depends on the customer, right? Um, and the modality, right? So um, something like uh, generating tokens for CDNs, kind of difficult when you're using a DNS solution. Um, we see a lot of customers use an HTTP API uh, solution for that. Um, but, you know, manifest, uh, Switching on the manifest level also, um, you know, you can, you can write a DNS name into the manifest um, and do kind of real time switching that way. Uh, you don't have control over the TTL. You don't have precise control over the TTL, let's say. So if you want to um, make a fresh decision, let's say at every stream start, then you're going to have to think a little bit harder about how to manage that. Got it. That makes sense. Um, from a nice people at work standpoint, um, obviously you're doing analytics, but um, what kinds of what kinds of CDN switching would um, your customer base be looking for? Is it all of the above? Are there particular decisions around DNS, etc.? I think uh, what our customers are looking for. Uh, is of, of course uh, quality and reach yeah, and uh, what was forgotten forgotten in terms of uh, uh, why we are selecting different CDNs yeah because not every CDN provider if you have as an example a global player and we're working with some of them yeah you clearly see that most of the CDN providers are not ha having the reach in each and every location worldwide so I think that's an important topic and we know that we, because we are working also with Wilfried and Lee Web as our data center provider, we know exactly that you need to have that reach. As an example, if you have, um, let's take one, one example. You have one football in 10 countries, yeah? And they have 49 million unique users and 25 million in Brazil. So uh, the performance of a, uh, potentially of Akamai CDN in Brazil is different to Akamai CDN in Germany. In Germany, you have nine pops, yeah? And I think in, in terms of monitoring management capabilities, I think this is something also you need to understand, yeah? And uh, I think also for the future, in terms of selecting different CDNs, you need to see also in, in, into the monitoring management capabilities. Can you inject the logs? Are you having uh, um, all the inventory and location data to clearly see what is happening? I think uh, a part of costs and quality, I think, reaches uh, very, very important, yeah. And uh, yeah, if you if you see the differences, uh, as an example, in India, you uh, delivery content from a CDN perspective with 1.5 megabit, yeah. Um, and in other regions, you're starting with I don't know 3.5, yeah. And that's exactly uh, uh, if you're talking about the global player reach and uh, uh, the existing CDN vendors in the region is something you need to address. Yeah, in each and every region, you are selecting five to eight different CDN vendors, as an example. Yeah. So how do you, how do your customers evaluate CDNs for video delivery, especially live, large scale, like you're talking about? Yeah, I think I think what 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 customers are are using our data in terms of how uh, the CDNs are performing in combination with the end consumer. Yeah, but I, I think we all uh, we are only talking about CDN and the right CDN. I think the whole OTT delivery chain all, and how they are working, all this uh, OTT delivery chain is working uh, uh, together from a transcoding encoding perspective to origin. Yeah, I think most of them also doesn't know if they have multiple pops to inject data into the CDN that uh, that uh, uh, a cloud based origin in terms of uh, connectivity and uh, load balancing is also very important. We we have seen that. In various customers, yeah. So, and uh, I think matching all the different data sources and to see, yeah, that these data sources are providing the right data to uh, put them into a service quality management on top to really correlate all the different sources into one setup is also important. This is what most of the customers, sorry to say it like this, 80 to 90 percent are forgetting, yeah, talking about features and functions, but not uh, of uh, uh, um, not related to monitoring management capabilities. I think that's an important topic. Yeah, yeah definitely. Brenton, um, when we talk about live, large-scale events, um, how how do you prepare for those? <laughs> well, um, yeah, that's interesting. We, we do do quite a few um, very large-scale events and similar ones to the, probably the same one that, that Ruben's talking about. Um, the, the, what, we, what we see is prepar like preparation is absolutely paramount. 
if you're going to be going to a global audience and doing a very large large scale sporting event you've got to be like 200 percent sure everything's going to work so you need that multi uh, multi cd energy but you, you and you need all the switching to work and you know, don't use simple dns switching um you've got to have you know sophisticated tools that actually can do things very quickly make decisions and use the data that, that's available now, um, what, one of the um, things that I've seen that being, that's helped with these be successful is making sure you've got lots of redundancy. So, so that's what multi-CDN, but, but it's not just the multi-CDN. You've got to have multiple paths, probably, well, probably you've got to have multiple encoders, multiple paths to you know, origin shield, you know, all the way through, you've got to have redundancy and you've got to monitor all of that. Um, but I think on the biggest events, the most uh, important, two most important things actually, uh, making sure you've really tested it. So, you know, if you're going to do a big Super Bowl or something like that, you really have to test every scenario. So you actually have to force everything to fail to make sure that all of those scenarios that you put in place are actually going to work. And yet, and you have to have the run books effectively to, to, to make sure. I mean, it's a serious operational um, activity. Uh, and, and I think the other thing that, that I've noticed more recently, some of the bigger companies are really taking seriously uh, because there's huge teams working on this and there's lots of vendors uh, associated with it. So having very clearly laid out um, decision-making pathways. So if this, you know, scenario A happens, who is the person that makes the decision to say, right, we're going to cut that CDN out or we're going to do this or we're going to change that or whatever. When you're running a very large sporting event, you don't have time to think about, oh, what do you think? What do you think? No, someone has got to be uh, designated as, a, as the right person to, to make that decision. Um, so I, I found the ones where that those sort of things are all done beforehand, all, all prepared beforehand, that's what makes those events successful. I've noticed one thing recently here that I thought we'd solved a couple of years ago, but seems to be raising its head again, especially during COVID, is failures at the authentication point. So oh. you, you have multi-CDN strategies, but there's this surge in a five minute window where everyone's yeah. trying to log on and authenticate for some form of pay-per-view content that just seems to also be a fairly significant fail point. I'm stunned because if you, if you type into a, ser a search engine load testing tools, you will find a plethora of load testing tools. And I just, I, I like you, I am stunned that, that people still to this day are not doing low test that predicted, or you, know, you should do twice the number of, of, of your your highest estimate and make sure that you can you can service that. And and the, I don't think there's any excuse. You, you know the, the clouds are there for that. You know we we can spin up loads of stuff on the demand. Yeah, it, I just there's no excuse. Um, I can't understand why people aren't doing it. You're right. It's taken us back a few. But anyway, hopefully more lessons will be learned. Sure. Wilfred, uh, any comments on that sort of how you uh, prepare for large-scale live events? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, and I'm just uh, picking up what, uh, what Ruben uh, said uh, a bit earlier. I mean, of course, if you want to build your multi cdn strategy to cope with, uh, with these, these big events, um, it's always the question, how many CDNs do you need? And uh, the, so you can, you can sort of add 10 CDNs, you can add 15 CDNs. Uh, what is more important is to have the right mix. And as Erwin was mentioning, you have to have your local uh, CDN for particular areas and you have to have uh, a number of global CDNs where you, uh, where you can also uh, create a, a partnership with these global CDNs to make sure that they are able to, um, to take on your traffic. Because obviously with, with multi-CDN, um, the traffic is always moving from one CDN to the other. Um, so you still have to have that partnership with the, those global CDNs that they can take the burden off of that, uh, that big traffic that you suddenly can push to them if something happens on, uh, on another uh, CDN. So it's, it's, it's constantly the trade-off having uh, enough uh, CDN capacity, so having enough connected CDNs, but also uh, making sure that you have your commitments or your agreements with those CDNs uh, that um, are cost effective with the right performance that you want to have. And I'll add two things to that. I think Will Law summed it up well in one of the previous panels where he said each of the CDNs these days has to make sure that they work well with each other so that they are handing mm -hmm. off the traffic well. 
I'd also say that the state of streaming survey, which I'm just finishing up the second annual one, consistently now, 90, almost 90% 90 of respondents are saying, we look for multi-CDN as an option for what we do, as opposed to relying on a single global CDN. And I think that's just- Yeah, but your amazing. biggest challenge would then be, sorry, your biggest challenge would then be, uh, do you want to do it yourself? Uh, I mean, as, as I mentioned earlier, by stitching it together, or are you looking for uh, for a solution that's uh, uh, that's actually seamlessly integrating all the connected CDNs and has a management platform in which you not only manage the, the CDNs but also get the statistical data from uh, companies like Managed People at Work or use uh, the, the 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 literacy information from Amazon Pulsar and have it all integrated into one platform. Right. That that makes sense. James, is um, rebuffering percentage a good metric on which to base CDN decisions? Uh, I think, <laughs> as with all metrics, the answer is probably it depends. Um, okay. So <laughs> I, I don't think that there's any um, you know, best metric. I think that it depends on your use case. Uh, availability would be <laughs> the first metric that you want to look at. Right, is a CDN available um, in this region? And I guess that when we're talking about metrics, we're not talking about uh, a, a, a global sense, right? Like CD, as we know, CDNs aren't uniform; they're they're globally distributed, and users on different networks and different geographies will be having very different experiences. So I guess the first thing, just with regard to rebuffering, is um, how widespread is it, right? And the other thing to think about is like, you know, you're, you're supplying data to a player that is using an ABR algorithm, which works on rebuffering and bandwidth measurements. So, uh, you know, are you rebuffering at very low bit rates? Because that's something different than rebuffering and then your player drops quality, right? So um, I think that if you, if you want to switch, or if you decide to switch, uh, you need a little bit more information, or at least consider a little bit more information. What's the health of your origin? Um, look at the cache statistics of your CDN. Are, are you being are you serving segments from the edges or from some middle tier uh, cache at a CDN? And the other thing that we often work with customers and recommend is to not um, switch a whole segment of users to another CDN. You want to slowly bleed traffic off. Um, on our platform, we call this shed. So in other words, as some, some particular statistic approaches a high watermark with some configurable probability, we will start shedding uh, users over to another option. So, um, so yeah, not a, hard, not a hard lever. Don't want to throw the train over the other track, just slowly bleed traffic. That's a really good point. Ruben, uh, from a measurement company standpoint, um, rebuffering statistics, what kind of statistics, you know, for making decisions about switching? I think uh, in terms of uh, uh, rebuffering, rebuffering is just a metric of uh, more than 90 we are offering. So we have different use cases. And I think uh, the combination of different tools and from my perspective, independent tools, not the uh, CAPEX CDN vendor, or CDN as a service vendor. So if you have, as an example, uh, uh, active switching or multi-switching component from NS1 in combination with a touch stream monitoring uh, solution in combination with nice people at work, you have different sources, a lot of different metrics and brief buffering is only just one metric. Yeah? And if you combine, as an example, all the different metrics you are having in combination with another topic, which you're always forgetting is the performance in terms of UI, UX, which is application analytics, yeah? Rebuffering, nice. If you don't have rebuffering and the customer has, has not the possibility to watch a video, yeah, uh, potentially is a CDN topic, but potentially not. So I think uh, where to start and where to uh, end, yeah? That's exactly what we are doing during the onboarding process. We are really identifying the needs of the customer. There is not a single metric which is answering uh, most of the questions. So it's a combination of all. And what I'm saying is from, from our perspective, in an independent source of truth, yeah, is the most important topic for a customer, yeah. So I would not buy from a from a CapEx CDN when CDN vendor 
uh, monitoring tool. Yeah, uh, I would like to have somebody who is judging independently if they are performing or not. And this is something TouchStream is doing. This is something we are doing. And then as one as an independent multi-CDN switching tool is also doing. Yeah. So I think that's an important topic if you have the if you want to have a multi-CDN strategy as such. Yeah. And uh, you need to combine uh, client analytics in combination with video analytics. And this is exactly, yeah, um, rebuffering is just one metric. Sorry to say it like this, yeah. Very, very good point. Brenton, speaking of multiple metrics and monitoring, um, what are some of the uh, best ways to collaborate to make sure that CDN issues are dealt with, both identified, mitigated, and, and rectified? Uh, well, we, um, I think, I think the, the best thing is basically being open and sharing the data. Uh, I think uh, you need to be sharing it back with the CDN in real time. Uh, basically. And I know, you know, we, we do it, we do it. I know, I know that nice people work do it and, and a couple of other companies do it. But, and this has been an evolution. It's taken, uh, we've been pushing this approach for five years now and slowly it's got there. But it, it, it basically, you can't, without collaborating and, and, and looking at the data and, and also, I mean, we have the ability to inject additional headers in our data that expose even more data. So you actually begin to get request IDs and things like that, and then you can tie them together. And we're, we're working on a project where we can actually, an observability project where you can pull that data together and give an even more intelligent uh, answer as to why this, this rebuffering occurred, because you can join audience data with CDN data, right? And this is really important, but, but we all have to work together to expose that. And there's some of the things that we, I mean, you know, we, we work on this sort of stuff at the, at the Streaming Video Alliance. Uh, basically everyone getting together and figuring out how do we collaborate, how do we share the data, how do we standardize it into a way that makes, makes it easy for people to understand what they're really looking at. Because no, no one vendor has it, no you know, one source is, is, is it. You have to be able to get the combination of it all and you have to be able to analyze it in an intelligent way. So yeah, it's, it's sharing data and being open about it. Good deal, thank you, Brenton. Hey, Dom, I know you're always good for a question. So um, <laughs> what do you have for, for the panel? Well, just a, one that makes me curious. So um, give, give, let me just paint a quick picture of a scenario where we've got two different CDN vendors uh, and, and, we, uh, and the audience is dominantly connected to vendor A. Uh, and uh, for some reason, whatever, whatever reason that is, uh, the metrics for the delivery from vendor B are matching up that we want to move the audience to vendor B. If we move the whole audience over to vendor B, uh, don't we get a herd problem? How can we predict using these CDN switching technologies that actually vendor B was performing fine when there were no, no viewers watching the stream, but when we move half a million people over to vendor B, how do we know that actually we just took them from 99% to 105% and actually there's no availability on vendor B and we have to switch them back again? I, I get how we can predict from past patterns that, that the scenario is good for a few for, for a few members of the audience to be switched, but I don't get how you deal with suddenly moving half a million people from one vendor to another. There must be some heuristic or some process for mitigating that risk. Uh, I think the answer is already uh, given a bit earlier. I mean, let's face it, there are no bad CDNs, but there's no CDN that can guarantee the, the performance in, in the whole world. So uh, you will never switch half a million people uh, because I mean, basically for every single connection that you, that end user is making with, uh, with an OTT platform, uh, you have that test for his uh, uh, particular connection for that ISP in that single country. And therefore he is being connected to, uh, to CDNA. The next one is maybe on a different ISP in the same country and therefore is connected to uh, CDNB. And uh, because we're adding customer uh, end users on uh, CDNA, maybe the, the user 1,000, 10,000 or whatever, uh, we have a new test, being it from uh, NS1 Pulsar, or maybe we have quality of experience uh, data from, uh, from, from NS particular work. And at that moment we decide, okay, we're not going to add additional users to CDNA, but we're actually moving it to CDNC. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Don't ask tricky questions. You weren't supposed to have an answer there. <laughs> I'll, add a, I'll add a quick one. Uh, <laughs> one thing that, that is possible is to um, come up with an a priori ranking CDN, maybe based on what commit you've, uh, you've arranged with them. Uh, so first step would be to route traffic based on that allocation. And then you set up a policy which says, okay, I don't want to sort these CDNs by some ranking, by some metric, because that will choose the best one and will probably crush the best one. And the best one will probably not be that one the best very long, right? So a better idea is to maybe have some bands, right? Say like, I will accept the performance of this CDN within this band, this band, this band, and then you eliminate low performers and you keep only high performers, but you don't, you don't want to flip flop traffic. You want to basically have a stable allocation, uh, 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 not short of some CDN being down or unavailable or some catastrophic metric going to a hundred or zero. <laughs> One wonders if you could, would you mention, Sorry, go on, Will. Yeah, so actually what, what, uh, what James is mentioning is that your certain best CDN uh, might still be good enough to serve uh, potentially thousands of users. Makes me wonder whether you should be extracting a metric of availability from these CDNs rather than, uh, than current ability to serve. But uh, hmm. anyway. That, that, that's what we do. <laughs> 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 not, you're, you're not able to ask questions here that people are, are still yeah, I'm going to go back to slide. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank the panelists for being on. I know we've gone past time a bit. Uh, Wilfred, Brenton, James, Ruben, you have something else to add? Yeah, I, have, I would like to comment yeah, because people are asking me why I have my scarf, uh, scarf shop here. Yeah. So uh, my seaport work is located in Barcelona, and this is a sign for all my colleagues because I'm one of two being from Real Madrid. The rest is from Football Club Barcelona. So uh, <laughs> that's exactly the champion from Spain, you know? Nice. So, Brenton, since you sit in Barcelona as well, if I remember correctly, um, yes. are you allowed to have Real Madrid? Mm -hmm. there? Oh, absolutely not. But, but, yeah, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> Messi. <Yeah. laughs> It's getting late. We're going to have to meet because we've got to move on to. Thank you. Thank you again to the panelists for being on here.